Hey, welcome back to day three of our One Zentangle a Day book study. In day three, we've again got three new patterns, but we're also going to be talking about enhancing Zentangles and a little bit about overlapping. Now, it talks about some patterns that naturally create some depth. We'll talk more about depth and shading with depth tomorrow as well. But uh, for today, the purpose is, with depth, is about overlapping. One thing on top of another, on top of another. And uh, in this example of a Zentangle here, you can see that not only will parts of a pattern overlap, but also you can have a pattern overlap on top of another pattern. Let's dive right into it here with practicing these three patterns and seeing how overlapping works in each of these. For starters, poke root has these little, I call them little cherries, or some people say they look like little mushrooms. Um, but, the, you know, whichever way you want to look at it, we've got a stem and a sphere. So the stem is two parallel lines that curve with a little loop at the end. And then uh, the sphere, notice that it doesn't start at the end. It wraps around the end point. So to make that, I don't want to start here at the end. I want to start further down and then wrap a circle around that. And then the idea is to just make that shape over and over again, filling this whole thing, but overlapping. So uh, I'm going to have another one here that's going to be underneath. So I've drawn the little stem, and then to make the sphere is going to be underneath, we overlap. I bump into that, I jump over it, I keep going. There, so you see how one poke root is on top of another. And so we're just going to keep up with that same thought, the stem, and wrap another loop around it, and that one's behind those three. You can also have a stem that goes behind. So here's a stem that's going to come out the other side. Made a really long stem there. And uh, again, just play with it. Have fun. There's no wrong way to do it. And you could fill the whole space or sometimes you leave some gaps. Totally up to you. Shading is going to help us push the three-dimensionality here. You notice that each one of these has like a little, what we call a smile shape. I know that kind of, some of them are upside down, but uh, what I like to do is keep it consistent and put them all on the same side of each. So on the right-hand side of each, or on the top of each, or on the left-hand, or the bottom of each. But wherever you do it, do it on the same side for all of them. And then also you notice there's a little bit of shading around this sphere where it overlaps on top of another one. So where this sphere overlaps on top of that sphere, we can drop a shadow onto that. And it really overlaps several different things. So I'm going to wrap a shadow all the way around here. And then this one overlaps on top of that one so that there's a shadow. And then this one overlaps on top of that one and a little bit on top of that one. And that one's maybe underneath a little bit. So the shadows there, just push that depth just a little bit. Our next pattern is called Festoon. And you notice that it starts with little ovaly dark blobs. And then we draw circles or ovals around them. So I like to, for this one, start with just a couple. Like maybe three or four. I'm going to start with three this time. And then... Uh, make ovals around them. It kind of looks like floating eyeballs at this point. And don't worry about trying to make them all the same size. You can have them overlap off the edges of the uh, frame there if you need to. Um, and then notice that the, the third step is to make little lines and baubles that come out from the center. So think about like a donut. Like, this is the hole in the middle of the donut, and then there's lines that are kind of wrap around from the middle to the outside of the donut. So they're curved, and then they've got little, little dots at the ends of them. 
And you just repeat that for each one of your little festoons. I don't know what a festoon is. Half of these words are, well, really all of these words are made up. But anyway, you get the idea. And then once you're done making uh, those first starting ones, then you make more. And you just kind of fill the space. And you can make them bigger or smaller to fill the spaces. You can even have them overlap on top of or underneath each other. So, like, maybe I'll have one here that overlaps underneath that one. Maybe I'll have one here that's just kind of in the space between. Maybe I'll have one here. And then once you've made all your little floating eyeballs, you make the little lines that wrap around from inside to outside and the little dots that go along with. And as you can see, this is not difficult by any stretch of the imagination. It just takes time. And um, that's kind of the point. Remember, the purpose of a Zentangle is not necessarily to have these beautiful drawings and beautiful patterns. The purpose of a Zentangle is just to find your Zen. It's to rest. It's to focus. It's to meditate. It's to relax. And if you're doing the same line over and over and over again, hopefully you'll be able to lose yourself in that pattern. Now, the next step is to do some shading. One of the things that it talks about over here with en enhancing a Zentangle is talking about thinking about the three-dimensionality of each shape. So, right, this, think of it like a tire shape or a donut shape, how it's, you know, it's got a hole in the middle and then it's round around it. And you can think about, you know, how if the light is shining on the top of this thing, then the bottom of it is going to have a shadow. But also think about how the inside of it, like this is, if this is the inside of the donut, the bottom of that side is also going to have a shadow. Right? And so I'm going to do that with each and every one of these. There you have it. Once you're done doing that, they all kind of look like little floating donut beach ball things. And pattern number three, Hollabaugh, is probably one of my favorites. I just love making this pattern. It's so much fun. Um, so we start with these parallel lines that you can think of like a roadway or a uh, pipe or a bar or, you know, think of those two lines as the outer edges of there's some kind of shape here. Think of it more like a rectangle than two lines. Uh, and then we just make more of these beams or roadways. A lot of people like to think of it like roads that overlap each other with bridges and stuff. Anyway, just, just fill just as many as you want that just overlap each other in all sorts of different directions. I'm going to stop there. Uh, then you fill the background. So I'm going to switch to my bigger 08 pen here. The background. So not inside the bars, all of the empty space. Just fill it in black. And there you have it. Finished with that one, except the shading. Now the shading is probably my favorite part of this hollabaw because it really pushes the depth to the next level. Look at the difference between these two examples. You see how this one here in the book, those really look like they're layered on top of each other because of the shading. Whereas here on mine, I haven't shaded yet, so they just kind of feel a little too flat. Now here's how we shade. We figure out which beam is on top. So this one's the first one I made, so that one's on top. And the ones that are underneath it, I'm just gonna shade right beside this beam. And you see how that really lifts that beam up and makes it feel like it's higher up and casting a shadow onto these ones underneath it? And you just do that for every beam. So this beam here is on top of these beams. So let's shade those. This beam is on top of that one. This beam is on top of this one, and this one, and I think that's it. 
and just doing those shading it's super simple super simple but it really makes a big difference and so now it's time to make a Zentangle tile using these patterns maybe some of the ones we've done before and also just focusing on enhancing our Zentangles with three-dimensional shading not just shading willy-nilly but really trying to use the shading uh, to and and the overlapping to make these um, feel three-dimensional and pop off the page and that's kind of the the thought there is you know this is abstract art but and a lot of times a lot of times I'll have kids in my classroom who'll just kind of do some scribbles or something and they'll say it's abstract art no abstract art you still have to use all the artistic tools in your tool belt you know things like overlapping shading three-dimensional stuff contrast so here on my tile what I think I want to do is something similar to what they've done here where I have two patterns that overlap each other uh, so I'm going to start with a border and I don't usually plan my string out I usually just kind of go willy-nilly but I think this time I really want to plan out how I'm gonna have um, maybe one pattern that spans across the whole thing and then two or three other patterns that are kind of on top of it. So I'm going to kind of start down here. I'm going to make a loop and then a loop and there. And I think I'll do one pattern that fills those three spaces and then the two loops will be two other patterns. Okay. Now the trick to overlapping accurately is to bump and jump. So I bumped into that shape, I jump over it. I bump into that shape, I jump over it. And in this case, these are straight lines, so I jump over in a straight line. If I do one this way, I bump into this, jump over it, bump into this, jump over it. Bump and jump, bump and jump. And while I finish up the shading on this pattern, I want to talk about how the overlapping is also going to affect the shading. So I'm going to have a different pattern here and a different pattern here. But where this loop overlaps these shapes, I'm going to also shade in those spots. That will make it look like the pattern that I put here is floating on top of this hollow ball pattern. Also, while I'm uh, finishing up this shading, I wanted to reiterate something we talked about yesterday on day two, which was the overall tonal value of a pattern. And so like this pattern here that I'm doing right now, the hollow ball pattern, is quite a dark pattern because uh, I filled in the background dark. And if I make these two patterns very light, you can already see that just this empty white orb here really jumps up above uh, the dark patterns behind it. But, um, so if I, I want to keep these patterns light, if I were to do something dark like, 
the Knight's Bridge pattern in these spaces, then it wouldn't stand out as much. I want to keep both of these patterns very light. Last but not least, I'm going to finish off with my little letter mark. That's done. That's day three. Now today we talked about these three patterns, poke root, festoon, and hollabaw. We also talked about overlapping and enhancing. There's lots of different ways to enhance a Zentangle. The specific way we talked about today was to use three-dimensional shading and overlapping. And tomorrow, on day four, we're going to continue talking about shading to create depth by using a consistent light source. That's going to help make everything feel much more cohesive. If you're interested in that, or if you liked this series so far, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow.